Hey, it's Victoria 3, and you're probably thinking, I've got the game, and I can't play it, and I'm struggling to get used to the mechanics. So I'm about to give you a tutorial on practically the whole game, but I'm going to make sure it's not boring, because I know there's going to be two hour how to play the game in full videos, but those ones are going to be so unbelievably boring to watch. So what we'll do is go through this piece by piece in a let's play kind of format, with me just roughly going over each mechanic as I do it, to actually make it kind of interesting to watch. So the objective of this campaign is just to make a profit with coal. How do you do that? Well, let's play Spain. Spain's a great start nation because you've got no industry. You've got a few problems you've got to fix, which kind of help you develop your nation and understand the game mechanics as a full. And two, you, I suppose in a weird way, you don't really have a massive advantage over a lot of the nations in game too. Like for instance, you don't really have access to any cold stems, for instance, let's say in Prussia, for instance, you can see here, uh, cold fields, which helps you industrialize a lot, lot quicker. However, if you look through the states of Spain, you don't have much of that. Anyway, first of all, you've got a bit issue as Spain. In the top left, you got red for your bureaucracy, meaning you're losing more bureaucracy than you're gaining. Therefore, 22% of your tax is being flushed down the drain. To get around that, we need to build administrative buildings. It's under the political lens here. Government administration. And here you've got your list of areas you can build it. You can either focus on profit by going for areas that have a less of an impact on your economy if you expand it, or you can go on areas that have extra throughput, which will give you extra administrative bureaucracy, in this case, Toledo. So just explain that. Can you see that? Percentage of throughput. So every single level of a government administration We'll give you a 1% extra bonus on top of what you've got up to a maximum of 21. It's the economy of scale and it's a massive modifier for any Victoria 3 game. It's what lets you be more productive than other industries in the world and get an edge over the AI. Come back to that later though. For the time being, we're just going to expand our government bureaucracy in Toledo and then we'll drop five of those on Toledo. Also, top it off, we'll go... Uh, up to five speed and then we'll just wait a week as you can see our construction uh, isn't very vast we need to improve our construction sector so we can build faster and build more buildings simultaneously to do that uh, you go into buildings and then construction and then build more construction sector it's kind of normal game this really you build construction sectors to expand your construction look for an area which is cheap this one doesn't get a throughput bonus you don't get a bonus for economies of scale for construction sector so my advice to you is put your construction sector in the cheapest possible location so we'll build two and three in these locations because these are the cheapest okay so we're focusing on coal tech okay coal is going to be our profit maker here now every nation that industrializes needs access to a lot of coal and coal is also great for your pops because they use that to heat their homes and that makes them happy and then improves their quality of life so having a lot of access to coal is beneficial for profit to make your pops happy and obviously to help other people around the world to uh go through the industrial revolution which will be coming to everyone by the way even you japan that's right okay so we're going to go into production and we're going to look for anything that's going to bonus coal mines i think there's a few down here here we go atmospheric engine unlocks a bonus for coal mines here which will increase the coal mine output but uses more tools so we'll just go for that for the time being what we've done now if you click on the top right here you can see the construction tab you can also go into it in buildings here and click on construction what's going to happen is going to build the good administration first and then then the construction sectors we want to reverse it the way around so if you hold alt and press on the up arrow or shift these to the top of the building queue. So build these on the top and then work your way down. So we're going to go five speed down. You can see it's going to build the construction sectors. Build those quickly. And then you'll notice as they finish them, the amount of construction time reduced. And also start working on two buildings simultaneously. Be aware that every time you build a construction sector, you can see your income here in the top right. That's going to be going down. Construction sectors are pretty heavy on your economy. So you only really want to expand that. If you're in a situation where, well, you actually need to expand your construction sector. Top that off as well, we've also got the invention of iron frame buildings. Now, this will increase your you see, efficiency of your building by 7%, so 7% faster. And it will also enhance how much construction capacity per construction sector is, at plus uh, 35. In this case, just go for it. Be aware, this has some downsides. It will increase the amount of tools required, fab required, wood required, and iron required, which more than likely your early industry probably won't be able to handle that. But we'll just worry about that later, any for the time being. As you can see now, we've got enough construction points to uh, work on two buildings simultaneously. So four weeks, three weeks. And if you go on administration side, we're at plus 22% tax waste. And now we're at 16%. So it roughly goes down about 5 6% for each administrative building. So four should be fine. Okay, so if you want to know what's going on in your nation and what your people need and what's going to be required to meet their needs as well as expand your industry and make more profit, you can click on the current situation. Uh, so for the time being, you don't have to worry about flotillas in reserve or your battalions in reserve. It just basically means you've not got an admiral or general assigned to that 
there was troops. Don't have to worry about for the time being. Input goods shortages. So because we're now making iron framed buildings, there is a shortage of iron and tools. So if we go into here, you can see the price of iron has gone up massively because the demand is shot through the roof. You fix this by going under the shortage, right click and establish an import trade route and sort by productivity. And we can get some from Sweden and Morocco. That's fine. Go back. Same again, do it for tools as well. Right click, import trade route. Get one from Qing, Sicily, and the Ottomans. That'll be fine. It's good to go for the ones that gain the most productivity because overall, those will work out overall cheaper and you pay less on tariffs. As your industry expands and you need more access to iron and steel, got more access to iron and tools. With this existing trade route that you've set up, you will import more of them. So you might find yourself, your economy tanking, maybe because the demand for tools has gone up massively and you're actually getting a lot of them from the Ottomans from that specific trade route. So sometimes the economy will go up and down rapidly and you become really confused by it. It might be the fact that there's a massive demand for that specific resource that you've got a sector set up. Be aware though, if the Ottomans, for instance, get attacked, go to war and they can't maintain that trade route, it might become unproductive. You might need to cancel it. But you'll get a pop-up for that, so don't worry about it. Next up, we've got unhealthy economy. It's basically saying you're basically spending way more than you've actually got money for and you're basically putting yourself in debt. We'll figure more we'll about that later. And next up, expensive government goods. And this is important to take care of because this will make, if you hover over your money, you can see goods for government buildings plus £10,000. This is a big deal because if it turns out there is a certain resource, let's say paper, that is used for bureaucracy for your administration, if the value of that item inside of Spain goes up massively, it also means that the cost for your government buildings will go up massively as well. So it's the best thing to do is try and import certain goods to take care of them for the time being now we've imported iron and tools so we'll just not worry about for the time being but if we do resume the game you can see the price of uh tools is coming down so that problem will fix itself over time all right we can go five speed and now we can wait for the game and progress and we're just going to build these government buildings by the way i put on five speed and then i unpause and you can see that it's progressing a day at a time as we as we go through as you see, our income is getting really bad right now. So let's sort out our income then. So if we go into the budget tab, which is F2, you can see we're on medium taxation. We're going to whack that up to high. And also too, we can apply consumer taxes as well. So you've got authority points, which you can use for doing specific decrees in certain areas, like these ones too, which can give bonuses to manufacturing, for instance. They're quite useful to do and very flexible. The more centralized your government is, like an absolute monarchy, for instance, the more authority that you actually have. Now, if you have a very anarchic government, where most control is decentralized, you have less overall authority. In this case, I believe we're an absolute monarchy. Can we have a look at politics? We are just a monarchy. All right, go back to budget. We're going to whack the taxes up and now we're going to add consumption tax for certain goods. Now, be aware, this will make those goods more expensive inside of your market. And if it's a certain item that a pops want, it can result in them becoming upset. And it's not really good for improving their quality of life if a certain good is outside of their reach because you've taxed it. In this case, tobacco. And we'll also go for luxury furniture. I'm going for the ones that all cost 100 authority. All right, let's sort out this government and administration and hopefully we'll get access to a little bit more tax. See, the, the tax waste has gone up massively now. So the reason why our tax waste has gone up massively is because we've got more trade routes. Trade routes cost bureaucracy. And as you can see here, now we're building more of these administrative buildings and we're going to sort that problem out. All right, next up, back out. We don't want to expand our coal now. So let's find out where we've got coal. So we go into the uh, production lens resources and you can see coal mines here so coal mines do consume tools so just be aware of that more than like it's going to be easy to import them and they also benefit from the throughput bonus in this case we can build them where we need to go so there's a few factors for this see the capacity here so 36 in aragon you can right click on them navarra valencia castile and also be aware of the amount of peasants in this region too because peasants here are unemployed and therefore the people who will work in these coal mines and it's also going to be a better idea if we go for a coastline so we've got valencia of aragon i think i'm gonna go with Aragon and we'll just prep drop 10 of these down here. So I'm going to speed things up a little bit now and talk a little bit quickly. Feel free to pause the video, rewind it or reduce the speed at any time because you guys, oh, you're clicking too quickly. You're clicking too quickly. The rewind function is there, guys. Be aware of that. I am going to click really quickly. I'm trying not to use shortcuts. I usually use shortcuts to try and navigate around the menus quickly, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try and manually click everything, and move away from my keyboard. And I'm decided I'm going to build another 10 cold mines. So we're going to try and get the maximum economy of scale. Press space to unpause. So we're in a bit of a deficit at the moment. 11,000 pounds. 
But overall, we've got a lot of access to credit. See that little red bar there? Basically, this is our credit that we're eating into. But as you can look really closely, and we pause for a second, you can actually see there's interest as well. So the deeper you get into the red, the more interest you're going to have to pay the banks. So it tends to hurt more and more and more and more. Now, something just changed in the market there because suddenly we're just making a massive amount of profit. I don't know what changed, but hey, we're making some decent money right now. You will notice the market will fluctuate up and down, up and down all of the time. What's happening with coal mines, by the way, is we're going to have to import tools to construct these coal mines and actually get people into them to actually work in them. So what you might find is initially when you build a coal mine, you take a hit to your income, but then you start to make a profit on the coal mines that you are, well, the coal you are selling abroad. And then go back to your government, government situation. Some goods are expensive in our nation. Paper is specifically expensive. So let's import more of that. Go for a decent price though good back out of that the more we import inside of our market it will cost us but however it will bring the price down so therefore it reduces the all the overall overhead of the cost of bureaucracy okay one thing you want to do here is these pictures look beautiful and everything but my advice is making the, the view list so you can actually see a breakdown of what's actually happening so we're going to click on coal mines and we can see here uh this coal mine is not working very well it's not very efficient more than likely we're not able to hire people because it doesn't have the funds to hire anyone. That's interesting. So if we subsidize it, we're basically injecting government money into it. We might be able to hire people. But that, unfortunately, will cost us. The overall cost is 288 That's basically nothing. The biggest issue is this company of the coal mines will struggle to get going initially until we have an actual trade route where we're selling the coal to someone. Coal is not really needed that much inside of Spain. So we click on coal mines here and we can see how much our consumption is. And it's basically nothing. So in that case, we're not really mining it to actually use it. So we need to find someone who can use it. What we'll do is actually start exporting our coal now. So click on coal mines, click on coal with the eighth biggest producer in the world. That was easy, right? And coal is incredibly cheap because nobody's no demand for it. No one's buying it. So then we need to increase demand. What we'll do is right click on it and set up an export, export route. So we're going to find the most productive routes. The French market desperately wants coal. We'll do Austria too. And we'll do Britain. And we'll do Belgium. And we'll do America. We want to sell as much coal as possible. What's going to happen now is this coal mine is going to now flourish. So it's been subsidized by a little bit. Look how much it's costing me though. £133 a week. Basically nothing. But you can see how quickly this is expanding. We're hiring so much people. And they can see the production output here. 157 coal. Oh my goodness. So productive. Boom. Here comes the coal rush. And we're going to encourage resource industry. This will cost us 75 authority so this is what we were talking about earlier authority can be used in a way to produce throughput output boom so 207 and now we're producing 249 we're producing so much coal remember the more competitive you make your industry in the world the cheaper the goods will be and the more your products you'll be able to move you can see the weekly balance here. You will notice it'll jump up, it'll jump down over and over and over again. Uh, don't worry about too much about that. You just want to go for long-term gains anyway. So as you can see, we don't even need to subsidize this because this is making some good profits right now. So as the markets around the world, the ones we've created trade routes with expand and want more coal, we're just sending more and more coal in that direction expanded again and every time the employment drops it's because a new level of coal mine was established and you can see the throughput is going up too we're at seven percent economy of scale we're basically now pumping out so much coal and if you want to look at productivity see how well you're doing 16 percent and uh, 917th most productive building in the world uh, to be honest with you this number tells you the most this one doesn't tell you that much i feel like it just dips up and down all the time i'm going to go back to the coal mines now and start building build 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 more 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 coal okay we're gonna turn off subsidies now just if we forget about it we're in a situation where we need we end up eating into our budget but for some reason that coal mine won't be profitable you can see there we were 900th most productive building in the world so you can see we're making more and more progress you can see all the, all the weekly balance is like 5k a week so making some really good money if you click on coal as well you can see with the second biggest producer of coal in the world which gives us plus 10 prestige prestige is a big factor that will let us level up to higher ranks which gives us access to more interest points as well as all the bonuses. Okay, we have reached a point where we have low market access. Whenever you build beyond your infrastructure, so you click on the state, click on overview, you can see market access. If there's a lack of access to the market, those goods will not leave that state and join the Spanish market and therefore won't be exported. So right now, unfortunately, 2% of our coal is falling into the ether and meaning we'll never get it back. So how do we fix this? We need to improve infrastructure. So right, we have 53 buildings. The maximum amount is actually 52. And to increase that, the easiest way is just to build a port. We're going to hold Alt on our keyboard and press this. And what this does is it shoves it to the top of the build queue. 
and 15 weeks to complete a port, which will improve the infrastructure in this state. There you go, port has just finished. You can see now access to the Spanish market is 97%. As I said, we were building coal mines off the back of it. And now we have 100% of the Spanish market. All right, produce those, build those final coal mines. We can only build one more. Then we'll be at max infrastructure. Look at the income now, it's skyrocketed just from sending out so much coal to the market. So we're making a good income now. What we'll do is start producing our own iron. So if we go into production lens, resources, produce our own little bit of iron as well. And we'll start building those in Navarra. We'll build seven of those. That will make the full 20 to get the full, the full bonus. 13. And there we go. So we said we we're going to make money from coal. And that's exactly what we are going to do. So we're in a situation where we can expand the coal further. And how we do that is we use another one of our decrees. If we right click on the state, we've got access to road maintenance. It's 25% bonus to infrastructure. Then if you look on overview, you can see we've got access now for an extra 13, 14 extra coal mines. Same again, expensive goods in the market. So take care of that to remove the cost of your bureaucracy. All right. The water two boiler is complete. So we can hop into buildings here, go into rural, iron mines. Can you see them? So we can change that. The compensating engine pump. This uses significantly more tools and it also uses coal. So do that for both of the mines. Now what's happened now is the increase in tools inside of Spain. The demand for it has probably gone up exponentially. So let's go on market. You hover over it here. There was a bit of a spike for requirement for tools but it hasn't gone up massively. Okay, we've got some good income right now. And you're probably thinking, oh, just pay off your debts, Dave. It'll be fine. Yep, keep expanding. Keep expanding. Keep expanding. Hop into construction. Find a cheap place to construct. Build four or more of those buildings. Hold, alt, and click. So it assigns it to the top of the construction queue. And you'll be in a really good situation where you expand your construction further. More construction. Bigger, bigger, bigger. And you can see more profits again. We're in the green. If you're in the green, you know what that means? Expand, expand, expand. Now, if you were in a lot of debt and that red bar was really far along, it might be better to pay off some of your debt first because in the, the day, you'll end up paying less interest and therefore less interest. You have access to more income anyway. It might be best to take care of that in the short term. All right, we've got access to so much construction points now. We can build three buildings simultaneously. I think almost four, but only not, but not a full amount on the fourth one. Go into iron two with the third producer in the world. And then we can create an export route as well. Where can we export? The French market, the Sicilian market, and the Egyptian market. Eventually, it'll reach a certain point where your needs of your pops will max out. And if you hop into market, you'll see a potential export opportunity. But I just did that ahead of time by setting up the export route. Just thought it'd be easier. All right. We're now the seventh great world power in the world. And we've increased our interests. What we can also do is build more coal but in different regions however be aware you'll not get the maximum throughput bonus because of the economy of scale and in this case i believe it's navarra and castile can produce coal so just have a little look so we can put maybe another extra 20 coal here if we hold control and click on the plus it adds actually 10 every click there you go the infrastructure in the north of navarra has been sorted now and we're building all coal mines in this region so when you don't have access to the sea you can't build ports there so there's not really an easy way of improving infrastructure hence reason why i started building up valencia and navarra first got the access to the sea now of course narrow aragon and castile don't have that luxury and that can only be accessed and improved upon when you've got access to railways and there's another hidden way of making coal mines more efficient you have to look at the supply chain so in this case tools are required to be purchased to work with the employees to produce coal. Now, if we want this to be more efficient, what we can do is make tools cheaper. Now, how do we make tools? Click on tools and then right click on the tool itself. You can see it's tooling workshops they're produced in. Tooling workshops require wood and iron. So that's something we've got access to. So what we'll do, is start producing tooling workshops. We already have two of them in Navarra, so, but we'll produce some more in some other regions as well. So here, buildings, and then add production for tooling workshops and we'll be very greedy and build six of those here one issue has arose i never thought would be a problem is we've gone over our infrastructure in aragon i thought i calculated that correctly but i've clearly not so we're going to our construction queue now we are making coal mines which are less of a priority but what we're going to do is shove these tooling workshops to the very top hold alt click on the arrows Jump back to the first page and you can see we're producing these ones these ones are partially constructed though so i'm just going to hit alt and make sure we produce just these four just so we're not wasting production time, we can start making those coal mines active immediately. Ah, this is something I'm not taking into account as well. There's a few other things. It looks like one coal mine 
is the equivalent of six infrastructure. Ah, I thought it was one per coal mine. Okay, that's where I'm going wrong. And also be aware that tooling plants, tooling workshops, they take up two infrastructure. Interesting. And they'll start producing goods. What we'll do is hop into buildings here. We've got the technology to make tooling plants more efficient. So if we go to tooling workshops here, we can add the water tube boiler. It requires overall less workers, so therefore it becomes more efficient. I presume this one just made more tools, but it doesn't. Look at the tooling workshop now in Eastern Andalusia, and you can see what we're producing there. One of the issues you might run into is you might be able to buy tools off the market cheaper. But if you want to subsidize this to improve the production of tools in your market and make them overall cheaper, as you can subsidize them. Now, be aware, this will have cost to it. As you can see, £67 a week. As it's expanding more, this cost is going to go up more and more and more and more. And if you look really closely, oh, as you're producing more and more of these tools, can you see there, the actual cost for tools is decreasing 8% less, 10% less, and 13% less, overall to a maximum of 12%. Now, this is not a profitable tooling workshop. We are losing 1,400 uh, cost for this per week. However, though, it has made the cost for tools go down significantly. And every time we expand this, we're going to expand it another two times. The cost to subsidize this will go up as well. However, the cost for tools will go down as well. So if we go back to our coal mine now, and you can see that the overall cost of tools has decreased. So therefore, they can actually produce coal overall more efficiently. Okay, a problem we've run into now, you'll find yourself producing a lot of goods, but you'll not be able to sell all of them on the market. The reason why you can't sell them is you just don't have the port capacity for it. So you just need to continuously keep expanding your coal industry, proving it in any way you can, by like subsidizing tools and expanding your port so you can export more and more and more and more coal. I'm doing everything humanly possible without actually fully embracing the industrial revolution by getting railways and uh, trains. But that's basically it now. If you look under your production, uh, we've maxed out our ports of Navarra and Valencia, so we can't improve the infrastructure anymore. Castile's maxed out. Aragon's infrastructure is maxed out. The only thing we could do on top of that is go for road maintenance, which is going to cost cost a lot of authority. So it's not something really we want to think about. Uh, but overall, this is it. This is the maximum amount of coal that I can export as Spain without embracing the Industrial Revolution. But this just shows you in a way how you make money in Victoria 3 just by maxing out your production. And you can see here we are the number one most productive coal mine in the world. Did you like this video? Let me know by liking and subscribing. And the next part of this video is going to be how to embrace the industrial revolution. So if you want that, let me know in the comments and then I'll make the video on that. Whoa, did you like this video? Then this is the next video. This one.